you for watching Risky Bitness. As of right now, we are still dealing with this uh, pandemic. I hope everyone is staying safe and being very careful. Right now, I know it's a little tough to keep ourselves entertained. I'm doing the best I can over here, and I hope you're doing the same. Please stay in to go out unless you have to, and uh, enjoy the games that you have in your backlog, because that's more or less what I'm doing. As of right now, I have uh, ordered the Final Fantasy VII Remake through Amazon, so I don't have that yet. I'm expecting that in a couple of days, and once I have it, I'll begin playing that. Uh, I've been playing some Fire Pro Wrestling on uh, Steam, and uh, I've been finishing up my playthrough of Final Fantasy XIII, so I can bring you part three of my three-part series on that game. But today, we're diving back into the Castlevania series for Castlevania III. And I decided to take uh, a tack with this of a Japan vs. USA video, because there are a lot of differences between the two versions. Some of them are pretty significant, and I thought it's something that was worth exploring. So without further ado, let's get into it. Castlevania III Dracula's Curse is one of the most popular games in the series, and it has been cited by Koji Igarashi as his favorite game of all time. It's a universally beloved title, but the version we got in the US was incomplete. Today on Risky Bitness, we're diving into the differences between the US and Japan versions of this title. Once again this week, I am uh, not appearing on camera. I feel like it's a lot easier to do the videos this way, and the feedback I've gotten thus far seems vastly indifferent to whether or not I appear on camera. Uh, I don't know, I might start popping back up on camera again. It just It's just easier this way. Let me know in the comments if you think I should appear on camera again, or if you just don't care either way. Released as a Kumajo Densets, literally Demon Castle Legend, in Japan in 1989, Castlevania 3 is a prequel to the original Castlevania. Taking place 200 years earlier and starring Simon's ancestor Trevor, this is the first Castlevania title that did not appear on the Famicom Disk System. By 1989, that system had been retired. This means both the Japanese and international versions use a password system, which allows you to continue your game later instead of trying to complete the entire game in a single sitting, which is a good thing because it's a pretty long game. This is also the last Castlevania to appear on the NES slash Famicom before Super Castlevania 4 appears on the Super Nintendo. Throwing away the Metroidvania style of Simon's Quest, director Hitoshi Akamatsu returned to form here by delivering a platforming action game that builds upon the successful elements of the original Castlevania. You'll notice for the first time that the game refers to the different areas as blocks. Uh, it's a much more precise way of telling the player where they are in the game. Castlevania 3 also features boss battle for the Gauntlet of Boss Monsters, a second phase of the Grim Reaper boss fight, and a new second and third phase of the battle with Dracula himself. Not only is the game world much larger, extending far outside of Dracula's castle and into the Malachian countryside, but it also includes a brand new play mechanic and the addition of three more playable characters. Trevor can recruit one partner at a time, and the player can swap between Trevor and his partner at any time using the select button. Trevor and his partner share hearts and a life bar, but carry different sub-weapons. Which secondary characters you can recruit will depend upon which path you choose. There are several opportunities to select your next stage as you progress through the game, which was pretty novel at the time. I remember when this came out, these were features that we really hadn't seen before on Nintendo games. The first character you'll be able to recruit is Grant, a pirate who can climb walls and is much more agile than Trevor and faster with, the, with a faster movement speed and a higher jump. His sub-weapon slot is limited to the axe only in the Japanese version, or the axe and the dagger in the US version. So why is this different? Well, in the Japanese version, Grant's standard attack is throwing a dagger. In the US version, this was changed to a pretty useless melee attack with the dagger. This is most frequently credited to the US video game rental market, which pushed publishers to release more difficult games in the hopes that players would purchase them rather than renting them frequently. In both versions, Grant can throw daggers straight above or below him while clinging to a wall, but in the US version, he must have a dagger subweapon equipped to do this. The second character you'll be able to recruit, and probably the most powerful, is the wizard Sypha. Sypha has poor speed in jumping and can only whack enemies with her staff, but her sub-weapon slot uses unique spells, a fire blast, an ice blast, 
and an attack with orbs that fly all around the screen hitting any enemy they come into contact with. That last spell is extremely overpowered and can easily take down any boss in just a few hits. Your final companion is Alucard, Dracula's son. The lazy naming would later be retconned as a nickname. Alucard can shoot a fireball and can collect upgrades to fire up to three at a time. Instead of using a sub-weapon, Alucard consumes hearts to turn into a bat. The heart meter ticks down as long as he stays in bat form. While he's not very powerful, this ability is incredibly useful and can allow the player to skip parts of stages that would otherwise be very challenging. After you've completed the game, you start from the beginning in a harder difficulty mode, and your partner stays with you, so you can reach areas of the early stages that would otherwise be inaccessible. The most obvious difference between the two versions comes in the form of censorship. The Japanese version features nude statues and a thick medusa. These were changed in the US version because of Nintendo and their family-friendly image. There are also a few minor graphic differences like cloud animation in the intro and a less impressive looking cross in the opening cinematic. The Castlevania series has always been known for its killer music, and Castlevania 3 continues to elevate that feature. Since the Japanese version was not released on the Famicom Disk system, you might expect that the music would be the same, but you would be mistaken. Konami managed to add three additional sound channels by using the VRC6 memory mapper in their cartridge. Unfortunately, the US and Europe NES models did not support this memory mapper, so it could not be used in the international release. The result speaks for itself. On a much brighter note, there are some additions to the international release. One is the inclusion of secret codes. At the name entry screen, enter Help Me to receive 9 limes, Okuda to start the game with Alucard, Fujimoto to start the game with Grant, Ubata to start the game with Saifa, or Akama to start the second quest, a remixed and much more difficult version of the game. This version includes new enemy sprites and rearranged items and enemies. It kind of makes me wonder why they couldn't fit the original sprites or music into the game. While both versions are very challenging, the international release is more difficult. In the Japanese version, the damage you take is consistent throughout the game, but in the international release, the damage starts out lower and increases the farther you get into the game. There are also quite a few subtle differences between the graphics in the two versions including different enemy sprites, sound effects, and some missing animation. The memory mapper chip in the Japanese cartridge really allowed Konami to use some impressive graphics and animation in their game, and not all of it could be brought over to the international release. To their credit, the localization team on the international version did a tremendous job tweaking and fixing the game to work on a more limited cartridge format. While the Japanese release is definitely the definitive version, the international version nevertheless deserves the love and praise it receives, especially for those of you who still own an NES console and don't have the option of playing the Japanese version. This is actually still a really hard game no matter which version you play, and a lot of fun, definitely a great game that I strongly recommend playing. Add it to your collection if at all possible. Thanks for watching Risky Bitness! An extra big thank you to all my subscribers! Please be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video and help get the word out so I can reach a larger audience. If you turn on notifications, you'll never miss an episode. Until next time, game over.